If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Assalamu alaikum. Let's study about behavior management. So what is behavior management? Behavior management is the procedure by which the dental team can successfully perform dental treatment on the patient plus they can instill a positive dental attitude. So by behavior management we are doing two things. We are successfully doing our dental treatment and we are also instilling a positive dental attitude. A positive dental attitude. And why is this important? Because if the child goes home with a positive attitude, he'll come back to you again or he'll go back to any dentist again. Okay, so these two things constitute the behavior management. Okay, so these things should be kept in mind. Now, one more term is behavior shaping. So, how is behavior shaping different from behavior management? So, what is shaping? Imagine a pot. How is it made? there will be a blob of mud and there will be a rotating sheet kind of and the potter he applies his hand to certain areas and thereby he shapes a pot. So here if we take this to a dental level it will be as if we are giving certain stimulus to the child so that his behavior molds into a certain manner okay so it is a procedure which slowly develops behavior by reinforcing a successive approximation of desired behavior until the desired behavior comes into being we are applying stimulus again and again so that we are getting desired behavior into existence that is behavior shaping one more term is behavior modification. Now, what is that? Modification. So, modification, as we know, it is modifying thing. So, the child already has certain behavior, but we have to modify or alter that behavior in a beneficial way. That is behavior modification. We are altering it. And shaping, we are altogether shaping it. All right. Now, Behavior management can be classified into two types. We have non-pharmacological and we have pharmacological. So pharmacological obviously involves drug and non-pharmacological does not. So in this video, we are going to study about non-pharmacological methods. And that includes, first of all, Communication, behavior shaping, and third, behavior management. So, behavior shaping has three components. First, we have desensitization, modeling, and contingency management. The behavior management. It has various subdivisions like audio analgesia, biofeedback, voice control, hypnosis, humor, etc. etc. Okay, so these are the non pharmacological ways. So let us first see communication, this one right here. So, communication is very important in that it develops a positive attitude in the child. And through communication, you can build a trust in the child. So, communication is also of two types. We have verbal communication and we have non-verbal communication. So, the non-verbal, obviously, it includes the body language, smiling, then eye contact. Now, expression of feelings and showing concern, giving a pat, giving a hug and so on. So, these are the non-verbal communicating methods. Alright? Now, the question is how to communicate. So, first of all, your communication should be comfortable and relaxed. The language you choose, it should contain pleasant words. 
and your tone should also be pleasant one thing to note here is that verbal communication works best if the child is more than 3 years of age because a child who is less than 3 years of age he will not understand what you're trying to say or he'll understand very less so you can compliment the child about his appearance you can ask about his likes dislike his class his favorite cartoon and so on and while you do this maintain eye contact so that you develop that connection with that person okay then use of euphemisms so euphemism are substitute word so if you have to tell him about an aesthetic solution you can say water if you have to use the term caries use toothbrush use raincoat for rubber dam and for radiograph say you're going to click a picture of your teeth right so that is so that is euphemisms all right then we have reframing so to understand framing let us suppose this is a child and he had certain dental experience in the past which was not very pleasant so what you do you create such situation that you take this child out of the opinion he was having and you show him a different side of that situation so now he is looking from here and it appears to be totally different so by doing this the facts are not changed but the opinion the child is having about it will change so we get our desired change in behavior by applying opposite of what produced the deviance for example you can connect this statement to daily life like when it is cold we wear warm clothes to remain comfortable so dentist is trying to create a different reality so you are reframing it now coming on to behavior shaping we have desensitization first so let us see what it is so what is sensitization the child is already sensitive to some experience he has negative attitude about dental office or doctors and you are desensitizing him you are removing that fear out of the child's mind so what we do in this we give different levels of stimulus for example first of all we'll show him mouth mirror so that he can play with it and see and realize that it is not harmful so he has been desensitized to a lower level of fear then you show some other instrument let's say a probe and then that fear is overcome second level is accomplished and then you are showing an injection obviously he'll be afraid of and then he overcomes this fear too so this is what we are doing we are desensitizing the child so desensitization involves tsd and that is tell do show tsd tell show do technique so tell and show every step and instrument and explain what is going to be done and continuously in grades of fear something that will invoke less fear in him should be shown first and then you proceed to the things that will give him more fear then we have modeling modeling so modeling modeling is somebody showing the procedure to the child and instilling a positive attitude in him so that could be his sibling or life model film model i personally believe sibling will have a better effect compared to the models and posters and all then we have contingency management so it involves reinforcers so we present some reinforcers that modify the child's behavior it could be a positive reinforcer or negative reinforcer positive or negative so there are two types for example if the child does something good you can give him chocolate or tell him that if he stops shouting or crying you will leave his hand so that is a positive reinforcer negative reinforcer could be that if he is shouting or not listening to you you can you can ask the mother to go out of the 
off it. So that way you can just tell the child that if you don't stop shouting, I'll send your mother out of the room. Now if we have to classify these reinforcers, it would be of three types. We have social, we have material, we have activity. So social is like you are praising the child, you are showing him a positive facial expression and material is something like you can gift him toys, games, sweets, some reward. And activity reinforcer, like you can allow the child to watch TV, his, his favorite cartoon, etc. Now we come to the behavior management, the third point. We have completed communication, we have completed behavior shaping, now we come to behavior management. So that includes audio analgesia, also called as white noise. So it's just that we provide sound of such an intensity that the patient gets distracted and he finds it difficult to attend to any other thing. You can play a pleasant music to reduce stress and so on. Then we have biofeedback. So here the textbooks say that you can use certain instruments to detect the physiological processes like electroencephalogram etc. But the thing is when we are studying about psychology just by noticing the child we can have an idea what he is going through. We don't actually need all these things. So just textbook thing. Then we have humor. And this is an important thing. Humor works for a child, for adults, for all age. So it will elevate the mood of the child. Then we have coping. So coping means the child is making efforts to cope up with the situation. The anxiety he's having, he's trying to cope up with that. So it could be of two types. Coping could be of two types. Behavioral and cognitive so behavioral are physical and verbal activities means if you find the child that his muscles are very tense eyes closed you can have an idea that he is trying to cope so in that case as a doctor you should reassure the child then cognitive coping is that the child may be silent and thinking in his mind to keep calm so in response to coping, we can give the child certain authority. So you can give some authority to the child. You can ask him to raise his hand if the treatment is uncomfortable. Then we have the voice control. You're using your voice, the pitch and tone of your voice to make him do something. And for that, home, which is the hand over mouth exercise, comes into play. So let us see what is home. So this is hand over mouth technique. So this was introduced by Evangeline Jordan, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Evangeline Jordan 1920. So why do we place hand over mouth? We do it to gain the attention of child so that he can stop shouting, stop his tantrums and listen to what we are saying. And usually you do it in a child who is 3 to 6 years of age, below 6 years, don't do it. Okay. And don't do it in handicapped or immature child or frightened child or somebody who is physically, mentally, emotionally handicapped. So before proceeding with the home technique, things to keep in mind is that you should inform the parents about it, that you're going to do it, inform. Then take a consent from them, very important. Then how you do it? First of all, you determine the child's behavior. You understand that other techniques which we studied previously are not going to work. So this is the last resort. You firmly place your hand over the child's mouth and you explain what you expect from the child in his ears. So when the child's shouting and crying is completely stopped, so that indicates that he is willing to listen and cooperate to you. Then you can remove your hand. Okay. And do not do this hand over mouth technique more than 30 seconds so 20 to 30 seconds you should do and there are several variations of it like you can use hand over mouth with airway restricted i won't recommend it and then hand over mouth and nose and the airway restricted not at all then 
dry towel held over the nose and mouth so this is it now why do we do hand over mouth with airway restricted that is homar why do we do it i think my voice is cracking now so why do we do homar hand over mouth with airway restricted so if the airway is restricted the child will be quiet the child will get quiet and he will try to breathe breathing is more important than shouting isn't it so this helps us calm the child and do it for not more than 15 seconds we can also do physical restraints so this is the last resort of handling the child when nothing works this is the only method that actually will work and there are various types of restraint like we have restrain for the body you can completely restrain the body by using peri wrap sheets towels and tapes just band dena it's kind of okay restraining the child and then for extremities we have extremities we have velcro strap posy straps towel and tape and for the head we have head positioner for the head we have head positioner forearm support and for the mouth we have we have mouth block banded tongue blade mouth prop etc so this was all about non pharmacologic behavior management i hope you found the video helpful if yes do let me know in the comment section below thanks for watching allah hafiz